Well, here we are on the cycle park at Glasgow Queen Street Station. So, just stepped outside because uh, the lady announcer is announcing all the time. So, wouldn't really work for this. Um, yeah, and we also have the rumbling of the HST. However, um, yeah, I'm going to spend a day travelling around Glasgow today and I bought myself a Glasgow roundabout ticket which the, for the princely sum of £7.40 I have a huge area in which to explore. My first plan is to get up and have a look, look at Loch Lomond and then run along the banks of the Clyde on the north side and have a look at Helensborough. After that, not really sure, so I'm not really sure how it's going to go but you know, you and I will um, basically see how it goes as it goes. So I'll check in with you uh, maybe when I get up to Loch Lomond or Helensborough, depending on which train goes first. We'll see. Anyway, let's go. I love the way that they've refurbished Glasgow Queen Street with the wonderful golden features. And I've taken the train from here a number of times, but always from the high level station. But I'm going to be headed out westbound along the North Clyde coast. So I'm going to need to be on the lower level east-west platforms. So here's the first test for the roundabout ticket. And it's passed. And the first train showing is for Helensborough. So that will be our first journey for today. There seems to be some pretty pleasant murals on the walls down here. Oh, and look, there's a big map. So let's have a look at this first route. We'll come out of central Glasgow, through Partick, and then on along the Clyde to Dalmuir. And then we'll finally get on the banks of the Clyde itself as we go through Dumbarton and Dalriach. And then hopefully another very pretty run all the way up to Helensborough. The pink line marks the boundary of the roundabout ticket, so I'm going to have to buy a couple of extra little add-on tickets to get me to Loch Lomond and Helensborough. And our first ride today will be on a Class 334 EMU, which was built by Alstom between 1999 and 2002. These trains are all standard class commuter trains. This one is laid out in a 2 plus 3 configuration, and it features the standard Scotrail Muquette. There's a couple of three pin plugs and the seats don't look too knackered. And we're off on the short underground section before we pop out a bit further down the line. Dalmuir is where we join the line that starts at Queen Street High Level for trains to Fort William, Oban and Maleg. And at Bowling we burst out of the trees and buildings onto the bank of the Clyde. At Bowling it's also worth noting the old paddle steamer harbour here. Dumbarton Central dates from 1850 and the opening of the line and is a Category A listed building. In 1858 the line was completed all the way from Helensborough to Glasgow which saved passengers having to change onto steamships at Bowling. And beyond Dumbarton we crossed the River Leven to Dalriok. We will carry on here to Helensborough while the line to Loch Lomond turns north. So here I'm going to have to buy a top-up ticket as we leave the boundary of the roundabout. The view along here reminds me very much of the run at home along the X estuary.
We are now approaching Craven Doran. Craig and Doran was a much larger junction station back in the day, but now it's just a single platform on the single track line to Helensborough Central. And here we are at the rather grand Helensborough Central. So we made it down the single track little extension line to Helensborough Central and um, yeah it's quite a big station for an end of the line isn't it? It reminds me a bit of Weems Bay where uh, obviously it used to get a lot more traffic and now it's just at the end of a single track line. Well that was a small extension to my uh, travel ticket, £2.75 to stretch me out to Helensborough but I think we got some lovely views of the Clyde so it was worth the effort. So I'm going to um, push off back to Dumbarton now and then we'll um, pick up another train up to Ballock and see if we can get a little view of Loch Lomond. So uh, yeah, join me back at Dumbarton I guess. Well as it turns out it wasn't quite Dumbarton but we reversed at Dalriac and then head our way up to Ballock. So I'm returning on the same train it would appear that all refurbishments are not the same, as this one is in a much nicer 2 plus 2 format. Oh, and the next coach with the accessible areas has flipped back to 3 plus 2 seating. And these seats are designed to flip up too. Right, and we're off back down this beautiful Clyde coastline. train on its way to Edinburgh. So I'm changing at Dalriac for Ballock because uh, that train was running late and I was going to change at Dumbarton Central because it's a nice station to to actually spend even 10 minutes at but I couldn't risk it as we were running late so I've uh, I'll stop with here. Yeah my train's going to be coming along in three minutes and then what I've been calling Ballock the uh, voiceover lady there said Bala so I'll, uh, I'll listen out on the train for the announcements and see if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Next up from Scott Rail's Box of Delights is the Class 320 three-car EMU, an old one that was built by British Rail Engineering in 1990. So we just have a short run up the valley of the River Leven to Loch Lomond. There's just a couple of intermediate stops on this line, one at Renton and a further stop at Alexandria. These trains really are much scruffier than the previous one I was on. This is rather like riding an electric class 150. And here's the River Leven, or Leven. Well, that was a very short hop up the River Leven, or Leven. Let me know. To my right there, the river is slowly turning into Loch Lomond. So, yes, I'm heading up to, uh, to have a look at the actual loch. But, you know, pretty little run. Um, those, uh, those old trains were looking pretty knackered, though. Uh, you know, line was smooth and all. But, uh, yeah, um, well knackered, so... Uh, no doubt Scott Rail will be uh, replacing those at some point. Um, but yeah, it was, it was okay. I mean, I was only on it for about six minutes, so uh, I think we can all stand a little bit of uh, scruffiness for six minutes. 
I'm going to head off. It's about, what's the time now? Sometime around 11. And it's a beautiful day, although there's a massive rainbow up there, which is nice, except it's got the word rain in it. Yes, I'm going to uh, have a little walk around Loch Lomond, uh, maybe some coffee, maybe lunch, I don't know. And then um, we'll catch up again. Well, I thought the next thing to do is to have a little, little spin around the Glasgow subway and have a look at their trains. Or are they trains? Well, they are. They're like trains, but just a lot smaller somehow. Um, yeah, I'm walking along a somewhat muddy path, uh, but that's okay. You don't get to clean my boots, but I do. Loch Lomond is 36.4 kilometres or 22.6 miles long and is by surface area the largest lake in Great Britain. There's been paddle steamers on the loch since 1816. The maid of the loch, currently under restoration, dates from 1953. Right, back on this 320 to return to the city of Glasgow. Right, I'm going to take the single seat by the toilet. Legroom, I'd say, is pretty non-existent. And, of course, there's nothing in the seat back for the passenger either. And down below, hmm, Scott Rail, you might have got the dustpan and brush out. Yes, the condition here is looking pretty grim. Still, you get a consolation prize of a three-pin plug and fully independent ventilation. Please mind the gap when alighting from this train. Dumbarton Central is well worth a second look. And here's the River Kelvin, which freezes at 273 degrees. And it's goodbye Class 320, and honestly, I hope we never meet again. Right, I need to cross over to Buchanan Street to catch the subway, but just pause for a moment and look at the majesty of Queen Street. What a lovely station. You get to Buchanan Street by crossing the road outside and going down the Travelator. And this is where the roundabout ticket didn't get me through. Because of course it's a ticket with a magnetic strip on the back and the subway has contactless gates. What the ticket holder has to do is go back to the subway ticket office and you are then given a one day contactless pass to match the ticket. Our first little run on the subway is a two-station hop from Buchanan Street to Bridge Street. That's better, we're through. The Glasgow subway was opened in 1896 and is the third oldest underground rail transit system in Europe. And it has a very unusual track gauge of four feet. So our train is a Glasgow subway second generation unit. In fact, although the two end power cars date from the late 1970s, the centre trailer cars were added in 1992. Next time I'm in Glasgow, I reckon they will have been replaced by the new third generation stock that has been supplied by Stadler and should be commissioned during 2023. I feel I'm on a very small version of an old Bakerloo line train. And here we are at Bridge Street. These tiny bay platforms would leave me feeling rather exposed if the platform became really busy. But I suppose the locals are used to it. So that was a little bit of the Glasgow subway. Slightly pointless ride really, round from Buchanan Street to Bridge Street. But just behind you there is the lines going into Central. So what I'm going to do now is just walk up Bridge Street, back up to Central, and then the next job is a little run to Paisley. So uh, let's keep going. So the walk gives me a chance to enjoy the River Clyde one more time and watch the trains passing over the river too. This route takes a little side entrance to Central. 
Right, let's get up the escalator into Central Station where I know the prep will do me a really good cup of Earl Grey. And while I'm having my tea, let's have a look at this quick route to Paisley. Very simple. Straight out of Glasgow, we'll be on one of the air trains and pretty much the first stop is Paisley Gilmore Street. And as expected, our train will be a Class 380 EMU built by Siemens between 2009 and 2011. It's very busy today and I'm not going to be on for long, so I'll just stand here by the doors and enjoy the roof of Glasgow Central. And in no time at all, here we are at Paisley Gilmore Street. Here we are, Paisley Gilmore Street, a little hidden gem just outside Glasgow. Uh, the station was built in, I think, 1840 with two platforms, and then it was extended, I think, 1880 to four platforms. And the train shed over the top, it sort of smacks as like we're in the sort of a, a little Glasgow Central. It's lovely the way that the uh, glass roof goes transverse in the same way as it does at Glasgow and then the beautiful, beautiful station buildings on each of the island platforms. Really wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is have a closer look and um, probably add a few cutaway shots for you as I was talking. So I don't know, the guy who does the editing, I'm not sure what he does, but um, I'm sure he'll do something like that, won't he? But yeah, let's have a closer look at this station before hopping on one of the many, many trains from here back into Glasgow Central. Right, as while he was waffling on, we spent a bit of time looking at platform level, let's step outside and look at the station. We exit the station into County Square and are immediately treated to a view of the old post office building, which has now been converted into a Weatherspoons pub. The station facade itself is, well, a bit bonkers. I mean, I'd classify it as mock Elizabethan castle come country house. But anyway, let me know in the comments how you might describe it. The concourse itself has been extensively refurbished through the years and there is step-free access now to all the platforms. This exit to Back Snedden Street is from where passengers can get the Glasgow Airport bus link. Retracing our steps into the concourse, the stairs take you up a level from which you can access the platforms via a subway. I'm loving the Paisley mural. Right, let's get back to Glasgow. enjoyed that little look at Paisley Gilmore Street. A, definitely a cute little station, that one. Uh, right, so I'm on the final leg now, back on the subway to go around to Govan to where I'm staying tonight with my American football buddies as we're playing American football all day tomorrow. So uh, yeah, it's the final leg and let's get to Govan. The subway is a simple double track loop of 10.5 kilometres or 6.5 miles with trains running in both directions. The tiny tunnel diameter gives rise to a real toy train feel to the whole thing. And here we are at Govan. So that's it, the end of my travels around Glasgow with my roundabout ticket. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little bonus video of a roundabout ride around Glasgow. I certainly have. And if you have too, then give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. I release a travel video every Friday and the odd bonus ones on Mondays too. So do subscribe and then you won't get to miss any. But in the meantime, from Govan Subway Station in Glasgow, it's goodbye and thank you very much for watching.